Hello and welcome to That Geeky Gal. My name is Gracie and today I'll be showing you how to make these mandrakes. Alright, you guys know me going down my usual Pinterest route and I'm looking for inspiration to make some mandrakes. If you don't know what a mandrake is, here is my friend Hermione Granger from Harry Potter to explain that to you. Mandrake or mandragora is used to return those who've been petrified to their original state. In Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets, we are introduced to the terrifying and magical creature, the Basilisk. If you stare into its big yellow eyes, you will suffer instant death. This was how Moaning Myrtle died. However, some students never saw directly into the Basilisk's eyes, and instead of death, were petrified. And to unpetrify the students, mandrake roots were used in the potion that was needed to unpetrify them. So let's make our own supply of baby mandrakes today. So make sure you grab your earmuffs because you don't want to get petrified either and let's get started. As usual everything will be linked in the description down below. Most of this stuff I was able to get at the Dollar Tree. So first you're going to need a small ceramic pot, some tin foil, green flower moss, flower foam, leaves or any type of greenery, acrylic paint, I'm using gold, dark and medium brown, a paint mixer, paint brush and sponge, a scrap of white cardstock paper, scissors, glue, gun and glue sticks, a black sharpie, and I'll be using air dry clay. All right, so you're gonna need your scrap of tin foil, aluminum foil, and I'm gonna get two equal sides, and I'm just gonna roll them up into a ball. These balls are gonna be used as the frame for our body of our little mandrake. Next, you're gonna wanna get a little bit of clay. Now, air dry clay is kind of interesting to work with. You have to really um, mold it, work with it, but I think it works well for this project. So what we're going to do with the clay is we're going to want to really, really thin it out. And that thin part, we're going to go ahead and wrap around our tin foil body. And you're going to do that twice. One for the front and one for the back. Once you finish wrapping that clay around, make sure that everything is nice and wrapped. If you have any gaps of the foil showing through, you can grab a little bit of clay and just mold it right on like I'm doing. Now you want to make sure that you grab one of your clay pots that you'll be using. And you want to also make sure that your little figure is going to fit inside the clay pot. If all of that fits very well, now all you have to do is grab a little bit of extra small piece of foil and we're going to mold out its arms. Same process as the body, grab a little bit of clay and wrap it around the tin foil and start molding it and pressing it into the body. And repeat that process twice for the next arm. All right, now we're gonna grab a little bit more of our tin foil. You're just gonna need three little small pieces. Again, we're gonna scrunch them up. And these are gonna be the little branches on top of our mandrake's head, where the stems come out, like for his leaves. Same process as before, just go ahead and wrap some clay around it. And then you go ahead and press it onto the top of its head and just make sure it's blended nicely on there. What I love about this clay is that it doesn't matter if there's all those wrinkles and seams going on. You won't really notice that because our mandrake is kind of like a giant potato <laughs> and it has all these wrinkles. So you kind of works perfectly for this project. All right, so that's the last little branch twig on top of its head that I'm going to add. And now I'm going to start forming the mandrake's face. For this part, just grab little bits of clay. I'm rolling them into nice long little sticks. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to form his eye sockets, where his eyes should go. And with the back of my paintbrush, I'm going to use that as a tool to help me mold everything and make sure everything is blended nicely. 
and you can customize your mandrix face to whatever you want it to look like. There's really cute pictures on Pinterest or on YouTube, and I want my little mandrake to look a little bit angry. <laughs> I grabbed a little clay ball to form his little nose. Because remember, mandrakes do have like a person's face, so we kind of want it to look like a person. And now I'm going to just mold in its face. Same thing, I'm going to use my paintbrush as my tool to mold, to sculpt, and to help me blend. Now, what I love about clay is that if it doesn't work out for you, you can always just erase and start over. This is what I did with the mouth. I really didn't like how the mouth was looking, so I just went ahead and took everything I did for the mouth off and started fresh over. And I liked this piece a little bit better and making sure that he still fits, adjusting his arms before he dries. And now I'm just going to add a little bit more wrinkles to his body. Like I said, he's like a little potato. That's kind of what I like to think of him. He's a root. And mandrakes really are roots. Had no idea they existed until after researching for this little project. And so you want to go ahead and add as many little wrinkles. Blend those pieces in. And it's like I said, it doesn't matter if you can see all of that blending in because it's supposed to look a little bit rough. And our mandrake should be finished and leave him out to dry. Alright, so now I'm getting my paints ready. So I'm just making a mixture of different paint colors for my mandrake. I will need like a, a darker brown, a lighter brown, and like a goldish brown. So for this, I'm going to be using my sponge. I started with the dark color and I sponged his front side first. Make sure he is completely dry before you start painting him, by the way. Now, you can use your paintbrush to make sure you get all the nooks and crannies because we don't want to let any of that clay color showing through. We want to make sure all his base coat is a nice dark brown. And like I said, whatever you can get with the paint sponge, you can do with the brush. Now, I'm going to get the clay pot and I just want to rough it up a bit. So I'm going to use a little bit of that dark brown with my sponge and just kind of dry brush it on there to give it a little bit of texture. This is completely optional, but I thought this would be a great thing to add to our little pot. Add a little bit of that lighter brown just to add more texture on top, kind of layering on. If you need to add a little bit more darker, then you can go ahead and add more darker paint onto there. All right, and leave that now to dry. So the front side should be finished drying from our mandrake, and now it's time to get the back side. I'm doing this in two parts because I want to make sure that he's completely dry on one side. That way, I don't get messy. <laughs> don't want these hands getting too messy, am I right? Aesthetics. All right, get every single little nook and cranny. And again, I left him out to dry. And now I'm going to start dry brushing a little bit of the lighter brown now on top of him with my sponge. I don't want to cover him completely in light brown. I just want to go ahead and add some dimension using the lighter color. Make sure you get the top of his branch twigs, his arms, let him dry again, and then you can get the back side of him. If you think you've added too much light brown, you can always go ahead and reapply some darker brown on top of that, kind of like I'm doing here, to kind of fix it and make sure it's still got a little bit of dimension to it. So you can always just go back and forth, back and forth, and blending. Now I'm going to use a tiny bit of the golden dark, or the golden light brown. And again, I'm going to put that on top, but because it is a little bit too bright, I'm going to mix it in with some dark brown. That way, it's not too, too contrasting, and it looks good. Set that down to dry, and now we're going to work on our ceramic pot. So you're going to grab your scrap piece of paper and just measure it out. And I'm just cutting it. I'm not using scissors. I'm cutting it just by hand, and I think that the raw edging is going to give it that effect of an age-old look. Go ahead and wrinkle it up a little bit as well. So I want my paper to have like a weathered look to it, so I'm going to use a mixture of water 
and acrylic paint to go ahead and give it like that dirty old look. And all I'm doing is just using a lot of water and a little bit of acrylic paint. Kind of like we're making a watercolor effect in a way. We're going to set that aside and we'll start working on the um, front part of our mandrake. Same thing that we did in the back. I'm going to use that golden brown and dab it onto the front. And then again, use a little bit of that darker brown to kind of um, mute it a little bit so it's not too contrasting. And here he is, all nice and dry and ready to go. Okay, so for this next part, we're going to grab some of the flower filler. And I'm just going to cut it down to size with a knife. Be very careful when you do this, of course. And all I'm going to do is cut it even more just so that it fits inside. And this is where our little mandrake is going to sit on top of. And just adjust it to however you need it. For this next part, I'm grabbing my dried piece of paper. It looks really good. And I'm gonna grab a marker and a pen. I'm using this Paper Mate Ink Joy pen. Uh, it's a gel pen, and I'm gonna use it to freehand what I want my label for my mandrake plant to say. Again, I went onto Pinterest and I got a lot of inspiration and I just freehanded this. You can always print something out and just make the paper look weathered. If you're not good at freehand, just make it your own. I think that making it freehand really gives it that authentic look like as if we were really in herbology because they wouldn't have printers back then. I mean, they're wizards. I guess you could use your wand, right? To write something nice. <laughs> So remember, so for your label, I'm just writing mandrake, mandragora immature, because it is a baby mandrake, making sure to put the caution to wear your um, earmuffs. This is one that I made, and this one looks a little bit different, so you can always customize it however you want to. So for this next part, we're going to go ahead and glue on our label to our flower pot. I'm going to use some... Um, Mod Podge, and I'm going to put it all over the flower pot to be quite honest because I do not like the texture of feeling a raw ceramic pot. So just go ahead and put it all around the pot, but do not put it on top of the label. If you put it on top of the label, the label is going to smudge and it's not going to look authentic either. Now it's time to choose our greenery for our little mandrake and give it now that plant look. Now these are a little bit too big for my mandrake so you can actually cut your leaves to make them the size that you want and use whatever you want to. Um, what I suggest to do is before you glue them on is kind of just play around with it and see what you want. Now get your glue gun and start gluing it on top. Here I'm just grabbing some little tiny ones and I think that my mandrake, he'd probably be sprouting like little ones like on his head and stuff because he is still a baby. So just glue those on. And now I'm going to grab some green moss. But first I need to make sure that my mandrake is nice and secure. He did fall a little bit because he is kind of top heavy. And then I'm going to add some of the green moss. And this is going to help it make it look more authentic. Once you're finished, and our mandrake is ready to be planted. Look at these mandrakes. That bigger one was one that I had already made previously, just to see if I could get, you know, the feel of how to make this to the, for to the tutorial. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Please give me a thumbs up, comment, subscribe if you want to see some more geeky stuff. See you in the next one. Bye.